Hello, I'm Susan Woods. Thank you very much for selecting this very short nonprofit class from the very short nonprofit classes series. We're still talking about the steps that are required to start a 501c3 nonprofit organization. In this very short nonprofit class, we're going to talk about step number four, which is write the mission statement. The mission statement explains how the vision statement will be realized. Remember, the vision statement is a broad, ambitious statement to let people know what your nonprofit organization will do or accomplish over a long period of time. So the mission statement explains how that vision statement will come to pass. For example, if the vision statement is to close the computer literacy gaps in the community served, then the mission statement can be provide basic level computer classes economically. Because provide basic level computer classes economically explains how the vision close the computer literacy gaps will be achieved. I noticed in some of the classes that I have taught in person, the How to Start a 501c3 Nonprofit class, some of the students struggle with writing the mission statement. They just can't make that transition from vision to mission. You see, the vision, again, is a broad, ambitious statement that should be written before you write the mission statement because the mission statement is intended to explain how the vision statement will be realized. Therefore, it expands upon the vision statement to make things more clear on how things are going to happen for the investors and for community leaders and other stakeholders in your nonprofit organization. So I explained to them this way. I said, all you have to do is read your vision statement aloud. Once you've read it aloud, insert the word by, B-Y. And then the mission statement will flow very easily from that. So I'm going to do it here. I'm going to read the vision statement again. The vision statement is to close the computer literacy gaps in the communities served by providing basic level computer classes economically. So I'm saying that the mission is to provide basic level computer classes economically. In that way, if we do that, then we are closing the computer literacy gap because we are providing basic level, because if people are computer illiterate, they need to start on a basic level. And we're providing those computer classes economically, which means we are able to serve more people, thereby increasing the potential to close the computer literacy gap more quickly. So that's what a mission statement does. So whatever your vision statement is, read it aloud, insert the word by at the end, and then your vision, I'm sorry, your mission statement shall flow from that. That's how it works. Again, my name is Susan Woods and just a little bit of background information about me. In the beginning of my venture into the nonprofit sector, I started a 501c3 nonprofit organization in 2003 and officially incorporated it in 2006. I operated two programs under that nonprofit organization, which is called Comprehensive Community Based Solution for 10 years. I believe in lifelong learning. Continuing education in the nonprofit sector is very, very important. Therefore, I have earned nonprofit management certificates from Duke University, Wake Forest University, and Winthrop, and Winthrop University. Excuse me. I also have three degrees from Winthrop University. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration, a Master of Arts in Teaching Business Education, and a Master of Business Administration degree or MBA. I love teaching. Through my teaching, I help nonprofit professionals start, fund, 
manage, sustain, and reinstate 501c3 nonprofit organizations by facilitating traditional classes and by providing self-paced online classes. Consulting. However, my specialty, what I really, really enjoy doing is completing the Form 1023 application packet for clients across the United States. And thus far, I have earned a 100% approval rating from the Internal Revenue Service. Again, this is something that I really enjoy because it allows me to help people establish 501c3 nonprofit organizations across the United States in order to provide unique and very much needed services in the communities served. Let me elaborate a little bit more on why I believe you should hire me to complete your 501c3 nonprofit application packet. The first thing I do that I believe is unique is I have a mandatory requirement for us to talk during a one hour phone consultation. During this consultation, I take the opportunity to listen to you explain your vision to me while I write notes. And as I write notes, I am determining whether or not your vision falls within one of the eight purposes the IRS requires to be considered for 501c3 status. I provide a contractual agreement. In this agreement, I outline all of the tasks that I complete for you as my client to earn 501c3 status. At the bottom of the contractual agreement is a PayPal link for you to process the very economical $1,000 service fee that I charge to complete the 501c3 application packet for you from beginning to end. After, the process, after you process the $1,000 service fee, then I send you an application completion timeline. This timeline outlines dates that you should expect to receive different documents from me. For example, I may have a date that you're going to receive the first document, the bylaws, on June the 5th. And then also in the timeline, I have a date in which I would expect to receive feedback from you regarding the document. So if I send you the bylaw, bylaws on June 5th, then I may expect for you to send me your feedback by June 8th. So again, the application completion timeline just lists a series of dates in which I will send you documents and in which I would expect feedback from you. Now, the list of documents that I complete for you from scratch are going to be listed now in the brown bold font that you see here. So the first document that I send or create for you or generate for you is called the Employer Identification Number or EIN letter. All nonprofit organizations must have an EIN letter included in their application packet to be considered for 501c3 status and I generate that EIN letter on your behalf. The second document that I complete for you from scratch um, is the bylaws. I'll create the bylaws from scratch for you because the bylaws are going to govern the operation of your nonprofit organization. So it has to be specifically created for you, for your nonprofit organization. The narrative description of activities. This is a document that I create from scratch to outline all of the steps or all of the things that you are planning to do in your community. It explicitly outlines or describes all of the activities that you're going to provide through your program services that are going to enhance the community and help people that you serve reach their full potential. And then you have the conflict of interest policy. The conflict of interest policy is a document that I, com that I complete for you that assures the IRS that you are creating this nonprofit organization for the benefit of the community and that you're not creating this nonprofit organization to benefit you in a dishonest manner. The fundraising activities description is a document that I create from you for you from scratch that outlines the different fundraising activities that you will use to generate revenues to support your organization. I will outline whether or not you're going to use social media strategies, traditional fundraising strategies, or a combination of both. The financial data report outlines the revenues and expenses that you will incur 
uh, the revenues that you would generate rather and the expenses that you would incur in order to operate your 501c3 nonprofit organization successfully. So I create the financial data report for you based upon the information that you shared and that I included in a narrative description of activities. Then I complete the Form 1023 Application for Recognition of Exemption. And this is the official form that the IRS requires all nonprofit organizations to complete. It includes 28 pages of information that needs to be completed. And I complete that application for you. This application also requires that we include all of the documents that I have listed above. The employer identification number letter, the bylaws, the narrative description of activities, the conflict of interest policy, the fundraising activities description, the financial data report. All of those documents go along with the Form 1023 application for recognition of exemption as attachments, which is why I describe the application packet as a packet because it includes different documents. I also filed the Articles of Incorporation for you. All 501c3 nonprofit organizations must file their Articles of Incorporation with the Secretary of State Office in the state in which they plan to operate. Now, this is a totally different application process because it's one that is on the state level. I complete the application for you with the Secretary of State's Office to file your Articles of Incorporation. Now, this again is a separate application process that I complete at no additional charge. Once your Articles of Incorporation are approved by the Secretary of State's Office, then they are considered as filed and they will have a stamp of approval with the date on it. Then we file or we include the filed Articles of Incorporation document in your application packet which is a requirement for approval. Now, as I mentioned before, I will send you an application completion timeline that will document the dates in which you ex can expect to receive all of the documents I have listed here in the brown bold font. We will collaborate, we will work together. When I send you a document, you will have a date in which to provide feedback for me. And once you provide the feedback, I will make the revisions you will be able to receive up to three revisions per document at no additional charge. Now that's astonishing when you think about the fact that there are going to be several documents that I'm co completing for you and I'm willing to do up to three revisions per document. That's a lot of collaboration and a lot of work. And it's something that I certainly do not mind doing. It's something that I'm honored to do because I want you to be happy with your documents. I want you to be proud of the documents that I create for you and pleased that the documents meet your expectations before we send them to the IRS for review and approval. Once you have approved all of the documents and you are very happy with the way the documents look and you are proud to send the documents to the IRS and ready for them to review for approval, then I prepare all of the documents, I print them up for you, and I place them in the application packet. Now the documents are going to be written for you in a way in which they are visually appealing. I use a certain font style, a certain font size, I use margins that provide the white space on the page to make the information easy to read. I use line spacing that makes the information easy to read. On the top left corner of every document, I have the header that it tells the um, exemption specialist which document it is that they're reading. And I also have on the bottom right corner of every document the page numbers so the exemption specialist can go through the documents with ease and know exactly what they're doing and making sure the documents flow smoothly as they read the information. So it's very important to have a visually appealing application packet to make the exemption specialist more apt to want to read your information than they would otherwise. After I have mailed the application packet to you, then you would attach a $600 certified check made payable to the Internal Revenue Service and you would send the check and the application packet to the IRS using the address that I provide for you. Once the application packet has been received by the IRS, 
then you will receive an acknowledgement letter from the IRS letting you know that your application packet has been received and the next steps that you can expect for the IRS to take. Now, the IRS requests a six month time frame in order to process an application packet. During that time frame, you may receive a letter. You will not receive a phone call and you will not receive an email, but you may receive a letter requesting additional information regarding the information that you sent in. As a part of my free services, I will follow up on the additional information the IRS representative requests of you. Most of my clients just simply let me know that they've received a letter from the IRS requesting additional information or clarification on some of the information that was included in the application packet. Then I follow up directly with the exemption specialist that's named in the letter. I will either call them directly and let them know that I'm calling on your behalf to resolve or any issues or answer any questions, or I will create the documentation that is required. And again, this is at no additional fee. And I don't know of any consultant who would do this level of work at no additional fee without charging extra, but I don't do that. I follow up on your behalf and I resolve any issues and answer all questions that are required. And finally, after all of the issues are resolved and the questions are answered, then you will receive a determination letter, which is also known as the approval letter from the IRS, letting you know that you have been approved or your nonprofit organization has been approved to provide services in the community as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which allows you to generate revenues tax deductible revenues from different sources, grant writing, fundraising activities, individual investments. These are tax deductible donations or investments or je revenue generation strategies that I should call them officially. These are tax deductible revenue generation strategies that you can use to raise money for your organization. The second half of the benefit of that, of receiving a determination letter, is that the people who give you money can write it off as a tax deductible donation on their side. So the two sides of benefits to having a determination letter from the IRS that provides 501c3 status. So these are the reasons why you should hire Susan Woods, myself, to complete your application packet. I provide a very good service. And like I said, since 2010, I have earned a 100% approval rating from the IRS. And this means that all of my clients have their 501c3 status. And they're doing great work in the communities they serve in the United States. And some of them even provide services in other countries. So reserve your consultation. Go ahead and reserve your consultation. Go to www.asksusanwoods.com. Click on the reserve consultation link and reserve your consultation. Once you click on the link, you will receive a calendar that shows the availability of appointments for consultations. I facilitate consultations on Monday through Thursday evenings from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Monday through Thursday evenings from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The cost of the consultation is $20. However, if you hire me to do your application packet, the $20 consultation fee will be refunded to you. So go ahead, go to www.asksusanwoods.com, click on the Reserve Consultation tab, our link and reserve your consultation so we can get started in helping you make a difference in your community. Again, I am Susan Woods of Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions. Thank you so much for selecting this very short video class to teach you how to write a vision statement and also to teach you or to share with you how I provide excellent services for people who want to start 501c3 nonprofit organizations. Thank you and have a fantastic day.